Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodovkar Schaller. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we are going to talk about two games. We're going to do Silkworm and Swiv. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but before we do, we've got some feedback from last week. You ready? I think so. Hi Nick, at the Open, Phil's putt on the 18th hole, Thursday. The miss was obviously a result of a raised cup around the edges of a hole. As you know, a very typical error of greenskeepers when they cut a new hole and pull the cutter out without applying adequate weight to the metal ring around the cutter itself. Have seen this happen many times over the years, whether playing or watching. Would you concur, sir? Respectfully yours, Steve. Do you know what that's from? Uh, no. Okay. This was a comment on our Facebook page on my review of Nick Faldo's Fighting Golf, or oh, whatever that was. So I remember that's a very popular video. Yeah. So some person, um, but there was a weird way to start the feedback. You <laughs> was totally baffled. <laughs> some person uh, thought that that video review was somehow Nick Faldo's official Facebook page, oh. and so wrote Nick a message, um, thinking that I was actually Nick Faldo. So I had to write him back and say, Steve, I'm sorry. This is this is not Nick Faldo. We're an Amiga podcast. Still. Um, so, I bet we could get Nick on. That would be great. You I'd love to have a bigger PGA media? presence here on the podcast. Um, we've got a new patron, Paul Harrington. He is another fan in Norway, but he's originally from Northern Ireland. No kidding. So I'm chalking him up as our first Northern Irish, Northern Irelandish native of Northern Ireland. Yes, fan. Um, he's also curious yet scared to hear how I'll sing his name. <laughs> I can't believe someone paid to hear that. Oh, that's, that's what baffles me. They pay in droves. They must have some weird taste in music up in Norway. They must. Uh, this is a, another... Hi, guys. Steve. Uh, press play on tape from the Retro Asylum podcast. Yeah. Uh, he said, just wanted to drop you a line and say, great work on the show. It's great to hear a podcast fully dedicated to the Amiga. So... Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're huge fans of the Retro Asylum podcast. Yeah, I love huge I love fans. Retro Asylum. I've been listening to it for, geez, I was probably on board right about the time they started. So, it's great. Yeah. Great show. You yeah. Know? Um, Big cast of guys on that show. Yeah. They do all the conventions. They do it all over there. They've got they put out publications. They uh, they're very very talented. Thank I'm, you very much. I'm not happy with the way our green screen is acting. What I'm green sorry. Screen boat? Yeah, I'm sorry what that we're getting this, this stuff back here. I need to redo the lighting. I apologize. Next week it will be better. Moving on, Gary Hucker writes in. He's from New Zealand. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, he says thanks for the mention of my feedback on the podcast, which he's, we're mentioning him again. Uh, he says it would be great to meet you both in person if you manage to get to New Zealand. Just make sure you head to the top of South Island on your itinerary. So we'll have to pencil that in on our New Zealand tour. That's uh, awesome. Next summer. I would love, you know, that's the I believe that's where they put like Lord of the Rings. It is. So there, it is. Be, you know, I, uh, I I watched some MMA uh, in Australia, and there's some guys from New Zealand. There's some good fighters down there. It'd be a fun place to visit Australia, and New Zealand. It'd be it'd be great. Yeah. You know, but, that's a long plane trip though. It's the longest you can. Where was they sent us tickets for their convention? That was that over, was in Atlanta, almost. See, um, yeah. that's close because they got an airport there. <laughs> right. So that's two that's places true. We can hit to. we can hit the VCF uh, festival and then just jump on a plane, direct flight to New South Wales. Wouldn't that be nice to go to New Zealand? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. That would be. Can I see where Tony Gurria was born? You know, Eep is uh, she's she's talked about moving closer to home and uh, maybe going to maybe moving down to New Zealand. So that's she's, not that much closer, is it? Oh yeah, that's that's half is half the distance to Thailand. But that's now. still not. It's not like you can just hop in a car and drive up and see your folks. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. She might not have actually said that. That might have been in my mind. She said that, and I said that sounds great. I'd love to live in the place where they made Lord of the Rings. You sing your own name all the time in your mind, don't you? I do. I do. Um, he. Getting back to Gary, he said, I was wondering if you have any way of displaying PAL via composite on any of your screens. 
Um, do we have a way to do that? Yes. Uh, Does our, our thing well, over there like do for that? example, my, my Amiga will play PAL stuff. Mm -hmm. It just slides it down the screen halfway and it looks like crap. Because he, he said he'd like to send us a gift, but he wasn't sure if we could play PAL games on our Amiga. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can make that work. Okay. Yeah. Well, Gary, we'd love it. Uh, we'd love it if you if you want to send us a little Amiga goodie. Uh, we, we love, love that stuff. Yeah. Um, and he also says, I'll put a link to this in the show notes, that he has, uh, he does, his own YouTube channel is about uh, vintage electronics, HP calculators from back in the day and stuff like that. No kidding. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the uh, uh, LGR, Lacey Game Reviews guy. He's a big calculator nut. And, oh, okay. and until I watched that show, I never knew that There were calculator cared. nuts, yeah. And I'm guessing this guy's an older guy. I'm the, I don't know if I didn't say his age, but uh, uh, when I was younger, and this is way before your time, yes, yes. <laughs> calculators were like a coveted item mm -hmm. i mean it was a big deal to have one and uh, you plug them in you know and they were and it was a, it was a it was a thing it was a highly valued thing they mm -hmm. cost like hundreds of dollars or right more, you know and then as time went on you get them at the dollar tree and they're solar power mm -hmm. no one gets crap yeah you know so it's, it's funny how that works have you ever heard of a polish inverse calculator no that's what my dad always used you know he's an engineer and it's a weird kind of system like you'll hit like if you want to add you'll hit 12 enter the other number plus and then you might even have to hit enter again it's a weird system but it's one of those things that if you learn it you can do things really fast and it's the only device i've ever seen that took those magnetic strips that run programs oh yeah 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 i'll tell you i'll, I'll go way back for you speaking of calculators uh, there was a time when we didn't have calculators so what do we have like abacus adding machine oh, it was in okay. between the abacus you know my uh, grandfather was a coal miner for many years and he also took care of all the mining housing in the area mm -hmm. right he was the guy who was basically went around and picked up the money he had an adding machine uh, uh for years and years and ended up getting a bunch of them so when i was a kid i used to play with these adding machines and try to use them did they have the the, the thing? whole oh, the, yeah. uh, the paper sp spindle and the these things holy smokes and you talk about heavy i mean these things are boat anchor heavy <laughs> You know, and at the end, I mean, I've, I've seen, I, I remember we went in this building that was getting cleaned out, and they had like hundreds of these adding machines in it, you know. And, and now, no one needs an adding machine. I'm doubting anyone collects an adding machine. Yeah. Secretaries at my school still use them. They're old <laughs> Is that how yeah. old? That's yeah. how old West Virginia and how out of yeah. date we are. Yeah. adding machines in the school. Yeah, they have their nice big computer, but whenever the, they need to do something quick, they'll just run up the tape on the they, adding machine. Do they have the Xerox, the big, uh, the big <laughs> metal barrel? It like the mimeograph yeah, thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we probably still have some of those. When I was in school, they had them, yeah. and they had the reel to reel projectors. Oh, God, I want one, folks. <laughs> when you hear the sound, the boop, that's when you knew it was coming. <laughs> Good times. No. <laughs> some things you should not be hungry to go back for. That's one of them. Um, speaking of um, speaking of Dreamcatcher, oh for sure. We uh, we were we weren't. Uh, he wrote in to say, I definitely fall into the people who don't understand why others love the Three Stooges. Comic. Oh, Dreamcatcher. He started off strong, and now he's, oh, And man. He, he said, um, was the game a big seller? He said, it seems to have scored reasonably well, though that doesn't always translate to high-volume sales because there's so many other factors at work. Do you know if, that, if the game sold well? From what I read, it was a successful game. Which is why it was ported. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't done well, they wouldn't have ported it to Jack. That's what I figure, yeah. I, uh, Cinemaware's early titles, a lot of them were. I mean, they had a lot of successful titles, and I think, I'm pr and again, you know, it's funny. I, sh I was just looking for sales numbers today for the games we're reviewing. I use a look every week, and I have never found hardly any. There's a few places, and I see the same forum posts pop up over mm -hmm. and over and over. It's all speculative. Well, I think it sold this much worldwide. I don't know if they just didn't keep the numbers, they didn't publish the numbers, mm -hmm. or no one gives a crap, but it's very t difficult. Like, I know for a fact the two games we did today were very good sellers because the people that made them said in the interviews I read, hey, these were great sellers. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I know about them, though. I have right. no idea what great selling means. Well, yeah, and it, great selling definitely means different things at different time periods because back, back in the 80s, if your game sold 500,000 copies, it was a rip-roaring success. I sure. Mean, even when in the days of the, the N64, was, or maybe the Super Nintendo the first time I saw it, Nintendo would put million seller you know, on the box on reprints and stuff like that. Yeah. But now, these days, if you have a AAA title and it sells a million copies, it's a flop. You know, so yeah, it's crazy. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's a different world, right? I mean, yeah. I remember, uh, you know, I'm old, folks, but going to Radio Shack or going to like Computerland, 
And you just have the games in a, in a Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. you know. Just that's the way Ultima started and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and and I was around for that, you know. I've ordered stuff out of the back of Rainbow Magazine back in the day for the Coco. And Where's it's... Computer Land? Where was that? Uh, Charleston Town Center. Really? Yeah. There's a store called Computer Land. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was a big chain for a while. Really? Anyway, yeah. Okay. That's the first place I ever saw Pit Stop 2. And the first place I ever used a mouse. Oh, <laughs> it was amazing. It was on a... I believe it was on an Apple, amazingly. But it was, uh, I was stunned. How does this thing work? I thought I got a cushion of air under it. <laughs> That's <Nope>. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got feedback from Sean Courtney. He is a big Three Stooges fan. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and uh, But before he goes into his main comment, he says he actually never interviewed Edgar Vidal, or Big Doll. Remember, we talked about that. I kept calling him Gore Vidal because I couldn't remember his name. Bad. Yeah. Um, he uh, he said that he would have loved to, and uh, but he, he never actually interviewed him. He just kind of knows a lot about him um but regarding the stooges he says i liked it on the commodore 64 and loved it on the amiga uh, i agree with you on the punch drunks mini game he says he's convinced that it's impossible to complete so <laughs> you know well and this is the last time i'll touch on three stooges but i was talking well about, you're you're going to talk more because like, he's got more to say oh okay well i'm going to throw this in i was talking to my buddy hose uh which i wish we'd had him on the show he's an old amiga guy and he's a the number one three stooges guy he was telling me a story he said that, uh, you know the guy that hosts uh, America's Funniest Home Videos and Dance with the Stars? Bob like, Saget? No, not Saget. The other guy. Trava Scott Bayo? No. What? No. I can't remember his name. Is it Trevelyan or something like that? I can't remember his name. The older guy. Uh, Scott Bayo has never hosted Dancing with the Stars. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Mm. That's, anyway, you're just screwing around, Boat. I've got a serious story here, and you're diminishing it with your baloney. <laughs> so anyway, Ho said this guy, when he was younger... Was a de worked as a janitor at a radio station. This would have been in the uh, uh, late '60s or early, very, very early in 1970. And he said his parents left town, and he decided that he was going to try to get an interview with the Stooges. You know, so he called them up, and this he'd heard this story because it was on. Apparently, this guy was at Howard Stern, and he brought these tapes. So he called up, he hunted around and found Larry living in an old folks home for Hollywood stars. Wow. Okay. It's amazing that such a place like that exists. Yeah, no, th I know that for a fact for another reason I'll get to some other time. But anyway, <clears throat> so he narrowed it down and he called there and, he said, and, the, and the nurse said, listen, Larry's playing cards. We'll have him give you a call if he wants after he gets done. And Larry called the guy back. He's like, what do you want? And he said, listen, I want to, I'm working for this radio station. I'd like to get an interview about this stuff. Now, Larry already had a stroke, but Larry chatted with, some, with him some stuff and he recorded it. And Larry says, listen, he goes, I've, I'd like to talk to Mo." And Larry's like, oh, okay, here's his, here's his unlisted number. She gave it to him. And so the guy uh, calls up Mo, And Mo answers the phone. He goes, hello, is this Mo? And, he, and he, uh, this is so-and-so uh, uh, -so from such and such radio station. He wasn't telling these guys he was a janitor there. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, and he had a real deep voice. Mm -hmm. And Mo's like, Mo was real aggressive who is this how the hell did you get this fun this number this is an unlisted number and he said uh he goes well larry larry gave me the number and he said and, and the guy said there was a pause and then, and then mo said larry huh that knucklehead <laughs> which i thought that was great but then he recorded a two-hour interview with this guy wow so there and then hose told me that when they were rec these tapes came back to light the, like look what i've got mm -hmm. interviews with the street two just one right before he died they were reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Mm -hmm. They said they only got one shot at digitizing them because as they went through the reel-to-reel -reel machine, on the other side, they just came out and just smashed. They oh all ripped gosh, to shreds. Wow. They, they, and apparently, so you can, I don't know if you listen to them on YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. If I find them, I'm going to put up a link for these three Stooges fans out there. But I thought that was neat. Even, off, awesome. even when they're not on stage, he's calling Larry a knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a speaking of Curly... Um, I gotta say, this is funny. This is the it was the third different story he'd heard about how Curly got his name. He said the story I first heard was his nickname uh, was because he used to have curly hair. The more recent story I heard was that he petitioned to join the Stooges. Uh, when he petitioned to join the Stooges, he shaved his head for a more comedic appearance, and then later bemoaned that it looked girly, and someone overheard it as curly, and that's how he got his name. Have you heard e either of those two stories? Hose told me. Again, it's funny because I talked to Hose about this in depth, and uh, he told me that it was a child, Curly, the, as in the original Curly. Mm -hmm. It was a hot. It was a. Uh, it was a nickname he'd had since he was a child, mm. and he told me the 
he actually told me how he got it, but I'll be honest with you, for the life of me, I can't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how how, how it was, but I, from what Hose told me, I, I, I'm going to default the Hose on this one because he is the master of Stooge knowledge. That that was a childhood nickname that stuck that stuck with him. Mm. Okay, so anyway, the world may never know what, but uh, so anyway, that's, that's the end of the Three Stooges. This feedback. is the Three Stooges podcast. Yeah, we're the two Stooges. <laughs> Bring Brent back in. That's right. That's right. Um, we got some site updates. Uh, as of yesterday, we officially have had over fifty thousand page views to the site. That's not bad. Not bad. That's our uh, site. Yeah, at least, our site. At got least that. one thousand of those did not come from Russian mail order bride sites and other things. We've got to up our, our game. <laughs> so, um, thank you for everybody that checks out our site. Uh, Dreamcatcher has put up a Bomberman review. Yeah, uh, I saw that. And he also wrote a great article on some of the uh, not so awesome arcade ports on the Amiga. Yes, I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we'd like to welcome Will Williams to the Amigos team. Uh, he's going to be writing some articles. His first article was all about bringing his Amiga online. He's going to be publishing a lot more how-to articles and things like that. So we look forward to that coming up. Yeah, that was it. No, we Will was on the show. Uh... What, yeah, how he, long ago was it? Was boy, many, it was, many episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. He he was on when we talked about uh, it was our D Pain. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a real real cool cat, and his I'll have to say his article is top shelf. It's gotten a lot of attention. I I, I will be following his teachings yeah. <laughs> at some point. It looked it was a very interesting article. Absolutely, um, and uh, we've also I, we played a bunch of games this week. Four by four off road racing. Uh, have you had a chance to check that out? Before? I saw the video. I've not played it before. No, it is. Uh, it's something else. I'm telling you, the way that you have to hit a log like in Lotus to go over a thing, but you have to flip. You flip. It's uh, very into, strange. It's, yeah. yeah, I remember you talked to me and Bert talked about that last week. I okay, like, what is that? we played uh, Tearaway Thomas. Uh, Chad and I played that. See, I've not heard of that. It's a Sonic sort of clone kind of game. Oh, I Really see. fast, um, and it's got some really British humor in it. There's a level called the Larch. Which I guess is the large. It's yeah. a Monty Python reference. Right? Okay, there you go. And then the other one, there was some other name that we didn't recognize, and it was from the Two Ronnies. Are you familiar with Two Ronnies? Mm-mm. It's another. It's a British comedy. They were a British comedy duo in the seventies. Okay, yeah. Um, so have to check them out. And uh, finally, one of my proudest moments on uh, the Amigos Play series, I completed King's Quest. I did watch a goodly chunk of that because I'd never seen it beaten. And I watched certainly watched the ending of it. That's a, that's quite an interesting game. It is. That's that weird era where they hadn't they hadn't gotten rid of the text, mm-hmm. and they you know, but and 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 it was it, it was looked very playable. Uh, I've not played that before. Mm-hmm. What did you think? What was your feeling? I know you were proud of yourself. Obviously, you should be. But what did you think well, overall? There were a lot of things that you there was no way you could have known unless there was unless you had a hint book. Like you get this bowl. And you have to type fill bowl, and the bowl magically fills with stew. Mm. So I, I'd say kind of cheap things, but it didn't bother me because I was using a walkthrough. And I wonder was, if they published cheat guides oh, back in those days. A, a lot that, of. Because that was King's Quest 1. Yeah. Right? A lot of authors said that they made more money on the hint books than they did the games. I've heard that, but I, just, I mean, that's so long ago. I, I, yeah. Now, since King's Quest, you know, that was the, that was the original, I don't know if the hint book market had taken off by that point or not, but. Uh, it's a really graphically impressive game for the time for '87, um, and uh, I thought it was. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do King's Quest Two next. Oh, gutsy! Work my now, way through. Now, didn't you record another video uh, game um, after that, or maybe it was already? Oh yeah, I did a, a transplant. Transplant. I don't watch you play that. Mm-hmm. That looks like an interesting game. It, I've never heard of that one. It was uh, our Arjen Schumacher. I think is his name. A guy from I think he's another guy from Norway, Denmark, something. Mm-hmm. He. Uh, he wrote in and he said, here are two public domain games that I think you should check out. And that was one of them. That yeah. explains why I haven't heard of them. Yeah. I was like, what is this? And that, was, did it play well? Oh, way? it was really great. I actually, it actually made me a little seasick because of the way that stars whirl and twirl. Well, it, had a, uh, it had time pilot-y mm-hmm. or Very, Bosconian-y yeah. kind of a... Yeah, it was a lot like time pilot. Um, and they had a uh, you know, great variety of enemies. It was, it was a wonderful game. The effect was excellent. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, why have I not? Well, I don't think I've seen a game on the Amiga that does that. Yeah, and can it, you think of one off the top of your head that we've looked at that has that that does it that way? No, no, not unless there's a port of Bosconian. Oh, you know the one that comes to mind is awesome. 
Okay, well, I, we which haven't we haven't played, played yet, yet, but I've mm-hmm. played the other. But I mean, I was impressed for a PD game. Wow. Yeah, the other game that I played that I thought was really great was another PD game called Alien Fish Finger, and that's going to go up this week. Uh, it's a it's a small sprite two D uh, side scrolling shooter uh, where you have upgradable weapons and stuff like that. It looks a lot like the kind of indie game that's popular right now on Steam. Hmm. You know, those pixel based shooters. Um, so be on the lookout for that. That was a great one too. Oh, speaking of Steam, I don't know. And of course, now we we checked and the ship has sailed. But uh, last over the weekend, they had a uh, Cinemaware sale. I hope a lot of you guys got in on it. Hey, it's a good reason to check Facebook and Google Plus because we, you know, Chris Folds was Chris on Folds this. was yeah. all over mm-hmm. it. But you could get the thirteen game, I believe it's thirteen game Cinemaware collection for under two bucks, under two dollars off Steam, which is ridiculous. Really, the only big title that was missing was Stooges, probably for licensing yeah. purposes. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything had, else was there. Though. It had everything. TV it had sports, Ra- Rocket Ranger, mm-hmm. and it had. I, you know, I haven't played any of this stuff yet. I just downloaded it last night, but I'm hoping that they've done away with any of the all the you know this ch- like the one thing about Rocket Ranger is the damn uh, using that damn wheel was a real pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping there's some way they've gotten around that. Oh, I'm sure they've gotten they've gotten around that. You know, so. But uh, that thanks for thanks uh, for Chris Folds for putting it up. But yeah, we, anytime we see a deal like that, we'll stick it on one of the forums. So if you, you know, I'm one of these people. I listen to a podcast. I never visit their site or give a damn about their stuff. But if you check in occasionally, there may be a nugget of of gold there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, what do you have for news this week, Aaron? Uh, let me consult the magic news box here. Uh, there was this was not a huge week for news, frankly. Um, the uh, uh, there are a few new games that got released this week, and I say new. There's one real new one. It's called uh, Project Leela. I think I mentioned this one a couple months ago when it was getting ready to get released. Uh, it's an 8-bit NES-styled run-and-gun game. Um, <clears throat> I looked at it. It looks interesting. I've not played it, uh, but they're, they're shipping that thing out. Uh, last week, we I believe we mentioned a tennis game that had been found recovered off an old hard drive that had was almost finished. Well, they, it has been released. Uh, it's called Center Court 2. Uh, it looks good. It looks real good. And the story behind it's real neat, too, which we went into about them. It was on an old hard drive that they managed to bring back to life. Right, you know, right. which was... I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I don't think there was much else out there this week. Uh, kind of a dead news week. There were a few other... I saw some other games that were nearing release but i don't usually like to talk about this stuff until it's yeah out mm-hmm. so so uh, every week go. can't be a huge news week that's this true is, this is a 30 year old <laughs> platform so man uh it's hard to believe we're you know we're past a year now so the amiga is over 31 years old yeah yeah it's crazy how old are you now 30 i just turned 35 so you're you're uh it's catching up with you. It is. It is. I'm Do we wish you happy on. birthday on the show? No. Happy no. birthday on the show. Well, you know, last week it was uh, Crazy Town with the, the party. and uh, Boat had a very nice uh, gathering over here. He uh, uh, had some good good uh, booze, if you will. He had some good eats. His wife was an excellent cook. Mm-hmm. She made us very happy and full. We uh, had our buddies come over. Boat had all of his good pals over here that he could, that could show up and... It's quite nice. Well, yeah, that was a really, good time. Really man. enjoyed it. Thank you for that lovely bottle of, of uh, booze, which I'm planning on digging into uh, at my earliest convenience. The way my week's going, it may be real soon. I was going to say that can that can help things along a little. Yes, bit. it can. Yeah. Um, Silkworm. Let's talk about it. Silkworm. Uh, good game. Bad game. I liked it, and we we sort of uh, this is a game. It's funny of these two games. I played Silk. I just played the hell out of Silkworm back in the day. Um, Silkworm is basically a uh, uh, shooting horizontal shooter. I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, you can play as a helicopter or a jeep. Uh, you scroll the screen. You basically fly from the left to the right side of the screen, or drive, considering what you're playing, and you shoot bad guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will encounter. You know, helicopters. Uh, you'll encounter uh, airplanes. The jeep encounters you know, all kinds of uh, tanks. Ground based. Ground based mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, the uh, missile launchers. Missiles all over the place. Uh, a, a goose 
a goose ship, I guess is what, mm-hmm. they, is what it's called. It, it forms itself out of like different kinds yeah. of ships. The uh, uh, the game came out in '91, uh, so it's not super. Or excuse me, that's not true. That's the other game. The game came out in '89. Uh, it was uh, Virgin Games. It was developed by. It was the game was actually released in the arcade by Tecmo. Mm, interesting. We, yeah, it's funny Tecmo. I believe they make some of the really good wrestling games. Uh, didn't they make WWF Royal Rumble or WWF uh, WrestleFest? And I uh, no. Who did that? that was that Tecmo? That wasn't yeah. Tecmo. Tecmo always had its own games. They had like Tecmo World Wrestling and things like. No, that. I mean in the arcade. In the arcades. I think it. I think they did. Maybe do. they did. I have to look did. into that. They uh, they did uh, Mighty Bomb Jack on the Amiga. And when I say that, I mean there it was ported to the Amiga. Uh, that was one of theirs. Ninja Gaiden Two. Shadow Warrior and Gemini Wing. Uh, this the game was developed uh, in combination from an outfit called Random Access, another outfit called the Sales Curve, <laughs> which is that's a wacky name. It is. Um, these guys, these two different outfits did some some notable notable games. I guess they did Random Access did Drudge Dread. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Well, I never played I mean, it. You remember but, the comic yeah. and the movie? Um, it was Stallone, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know Judge Dredd comic book fans weren't hugely fame, uh, popular about that. Um, they did they did Narc. Yeah, on played the a lot of Narc at the Skate Arena. Narc was a pretty interesting. That was a was that a, who was that Atari that did that in the arcade? Hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, um, Ninja Warrior. For, I don't know. Do you remember that in the arcade? No, I never oh, that heard of just, that. Maybe that's just an Amiga game they did. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, it must have been. I don't know. Ethan and I watch American Ninja Warrior every week. Yeah, I watch that. That's a good show. You see the one-legged guy on there? Yeah, I saw him wrestle a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah, he was at the show in Madison. Unbelievable. He wrestled. Is he with, from West Virginia? No. Oh. He wrestled in a tag team with a guy that has uh, um, cerebral palsy. I believe is what he oh. has, and and they they're called the handicapped heroes. They're, they're they're good, and he wrestles without the prosthetic. Wow. He's a good. He's a good worker. He's yeah. a real good match. Well. Yeah, they're real good. Anyway, I digress. Um, the sales curve did a game called Indie Heat, <laughs> Heat, and Rodland. Rodland came up over and over, <laughs> and this. Uh, so I don't know what the heck Rodland is, but he was. Uh, he didn't play for the Bulls, right? He's a big North Korea fan. You got me, man. Um, this thing works on the old original chipset. It's it's a disc, and uh, it had one or two players simultaneous. You know, there's not a whole lot to be said. In, in a lot of ways, the name is derived from sort of the uh, the backstory is that the world is on the edge of war on, on the edge of war bleh, war and it, and it hangs the fate of the world hangs on a single silken thread mm. and so that's where they apparently come up with a silkworm Interesting. name. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, what did you think of silkworm? Well, I liked it. Um, it's got it it a lot of its roots come from games like Choplifter. Um. Right. Mm. How do you figure? Because it's a helicopter. It's I a mean, helicopter. Shop- it's side scrolling. Yeah, but you like, fire missiles. Yeah, but uh, choplifter. You you can fly either way. You could land, and you picked up prisoners. Well, so choplifter is a better game. I mean, I like choplifter. Yeah. Will you put me on the spot here, Bo? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but I think that the Jeep adds a tremendous amount to what is otherwise kind of a ho hum experience. Uh, the Jeep is. Is difficult to control, but it's cool. It's got a rotating turret at the top, and so you can fire and move in different directions. Um, one thing about this game that is kind of odd is they make a lot out of the invincibility shield. You get these shields pretty often, and you're almost expected just to ram yourself into enemies when you have it. Yeah, the, the shields, you have to shoot this thing on the ground. That well, that's not the only way to get them, but it's uh, it's kind of like a disc looking mm-hmm. thing. It's flat, and it's and you shoot those a little sparkly cloud yeah. appears, and then sometimes they'll just be floating around. Mm-hmm. And like sometimes you can get them when the when you blow up the goose the goose ship. Yeah, yeah, they seem to they seem to happen fairly often. Um, this game suffers from what I consider to be lazy programming, and that there's only two bosses. Uh, you fight a tank and a plane <laughs> in alternating order, pretty much indefinitely. I will say I've read a bunch of interviews with the guys that made this, and they and apparently that's the way it is in the arcade, because they were asked, "Did you ever think to put more in bosses in this?" And they said, "It really never occurred to us. We wanted to make it as faithful to the arcade as possible." Sure, I don't blame the port the port guys. I yeah. blame the arcade guys. Um, the uh, most people consider this the 
ultimate port. Uh, they, it's, this is one of those games. You hear the, the words arcade perfect mm-hmm. conversion thrown around, but a lot of people would say that this is as close as you're going to get to an arcade, arcade perfect conversion, right down to some of the timings mm. and whatnot. These guys really went uh, the extra mile. In the interviews, they, uh, they actually got the source. They went through it. They put everything in it the, uh, the best way they could. They did a lot of little programming tricks to get that much stuff on the screen at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the neat things about this game is that you'll be flying along, and in the background, because it's sort of a parallax thing going on, you'll see off in the distance, you'll see little uh, fleets of planes coming along and, and that are coming to get you. They'll be moving at a little quicker pace in the background, and eventually, supremely, they'll come out to get you at some point, which I always like that is neat. It's yeah. a neat touch. Uh, there's a lot of enemies on the screen at once. There's a lot of bullets flying. There's a lot of missiles flying, and uh, really no slowdown. If you think I didn't notice anything wacky, happened. it really it really plays well and it looks great. I mean, I, I actually I didn't look at the arcade port, but it looked like it could have been it looked like it could have been an arcade game. What? Well, I mean, it was basically an arcade game. Yeah, right? I mean, but I mean, like it wouldn't look out of place if you took those graphics and put them in a cap. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Amiga was the lead version. Uh, there was an ST, and well, the Amiga and the Atari ST versions uh, were at the same time. Uh, I've not played the Atari ST version, but apparently it's very, it's much slower. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the interview I read, the, the it's, it had nothing to do with, it had the same CPU power, but didn't have any blitter or something, some kind of programming jack that I don't know much about, but whatever it was, it handicapped at the point where it was running about half, half the speed. Um, it's funny, I read on Wiki that uh, this doesn't have an ending. And I, first of all, I could never get to the ending, so I wouldn't have known any way it went. But I watched the long play of this, and the Amiga long play did have an ending. Hmm. I don't know, did you see the ending of it? No. The wor- it, Basically, words appear on the screen if you beat this final guy. There's, and the final guy is like this... Uh, what it reminded me of was the NPC clone, uh, cone in Tron, sort of. There's this big kind of machine... And there's these two things coming up out of the ground and from the, from the ceiling, and there's this thing in the middle that you shoot at, and there's computer stuff in the background. And when you blow this thing up, it explodes for a while. Then it's, it's just a it shows a uh, like a zoomed out version of this like uh, compound, and this and this building kind of collapses. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a little like I guess there's a sort of a little animation, and then it puts these it, it puts words on the screen. I'll, I'll read these words because they were amusing. Uh, and history records that during these 11 eventful months, many lives were lost. Peace returned to the now decimated countryside. The people returned to find crops ruined, churches defiled, and the villages, village pond dried up. A meeting of the elders and pleasant peasants was held in a local pub. Luckily, everyone saw the funny side. That's how it is. <laughs> Which I thought, that, I thought that was pretty funny. That actually. is pretty funny. Uh, so... <laughs> um, but overall, uh, a pretty I, I, I've always loved this game. The Jeep, you have to be a really skilled player to mm-hmm. be the Jeep. That's definitely the, the, the tougher of the two. The, the, you have to be very learn how to control the, the, the moving gun is vital. Yeah. Uh, Brent's a good hand. Oh yeah, he, he did. If you saw our playthrough, uh, Brent is a real good hand at it. Um, the, uh, the graphics are pleasant. like there's no speed, there's no slowdown. it all comes on one disc. It loads nicely. Uh, overall, I thought it was an enjoyable game. If we compare it to other side-scrolling shooters that we've played, help me out here. What have we played that we that would fall into the category of this? I guess Blood Money. Yeah. Um, I think this is probably better playing than Blood Money. I like Blood Money's entrance. I like the music, but I think this is and it, it's smooth. But this is a more playable game yeah. than Blood Money. It's, it's more enjoyable for sure. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else we could think of. Right I mean, I like. Uh, for uh, uh, Menace comes to mind. We haven't reviewed Menace, but it's kind of along the same lines uh, of that. R type mm-hmm. is another one that would come to mind. It's a, mm-hmm. this one I think is in the ballpark overall. Yeah, but, I mean, it, I feel like the things that were lacking for me were variety of enemies, and you know, if you you got to have that in a shooter because <laughs> what else are you doing? You're shooting stuff. Yeah, um, and. But, like I said, I don't fault the people that ported the game because they were just doing what was in the arcade game. Yeah. Now, this thing was ported, this ported to a lot, of, a lot of machines. Some of these surprised me, frankly. The Amiga and the Atari ST, the C64, the, the ZX or ZX Spectrum, mm-hmm. if you will, 
Amstrad, CPC, and, uh, and the NES. Mm -hmm. I've not played the, in, the the NES version, but I would probably have to have a look at that. And see I wonder if that was the, we say this every time. I wonder if it was a European only release. I'm not or, sure this. I'm not sure this game was released oh, in America you know at all. You know, look, thinking back over my years of collecting NES games, I think I might have seen a Silkworm card or two, mm. and I never, I never pursued it. But oh, and why? Well, I, I, which I was hoping to get it over here, but Brent, my brother, had to work late. But we actually have a Silkworm marquee, arcade marquee at the house, and I you think bring it over actually, next week. I think we'll we actually have yeah. the game somewhere too, so it's it's kind of a neat marquee. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, yeah, we we'll have to check this out on the NES. I'd like to I'd be interested. It looks like I, the uh, I heard the Amiga went the way to go. Um, they said the uh, Spectre version they only took three months to program it start to finish. It was a copy of the Amiga version. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, the the guy one of the interviews I read with one of the guys that worked for. Uh, I think he was at the sales curve. I'm pretty sure. He said that both this and Sviv were big sellers. Mm. So again, if it's a big seller, it gets ported a lot. Right. Assuming that's what happened. So uh, music good. There's, I, you know, I, it. I, can you remember the music at all? Even I can't remember. If it was. I remember. It was a time from, I don't remember. You know, when you started, that's about it. There's no music in the game. I yeah, I can't remember. Uh, so I guess that not memorable. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, there's little else to say. I mean, it's a fun game. It's a great two-player game. It can be frustrating if you're the Jeep. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty much long and short of it. Yeah. So, did you uh, did you look on eBay on this one? Oh, I sure did. In fact, let me consult the magic box here since my other thing to print. I looked on eBay uh, on this particular one, and it's a not an easy find. Let me dig through the numbers here. Oh, review wise, while well, we're thinking about it, um, this thing got good scores. Uh, looks like uh, somewhere between 81 and 94. And Amiga Format gave it an 86. It's sort of my default. Mm -hmm. I used to read Amiga Format. Um, pretty good scores. Uh, this game was pretty commonplace back in the day, sort of. Not two player like this, but you know, overall. Uh, uh, a pretty good score. So eBay on Silkworm. Uh, and this is why I'm wondering if this was released in the States, if either of these, because there, there were no U.S. copies of any of either one of these games. Uh, Silkworm with, with the box, uh, and these were all in Europe, 33 to 60 bucks U.S. shipped. So uh, pr more expensive than I would have guessed, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, the disc only, 12 bucks U.S. shipped, but who wants just the disc? Right. Um, so, you know, that's I would say that's kind of rareish. It's not super rare, but I mean, there, there's none here. Anytime we don't get, any, and I looked and I couldn't find any that have been sold here. So I'm guessing maybe this didn't get released in the states. Yeah. You know, so our loss, right? Yeah. So let's move on to S W I V or uh, Sviv or however you want to pronounce it. Wouldn't it just be Sviv? Sviv, uh, 1991. Deja Vu, right? So this was released the same year that uh, Silkworm was released? No. Remember, I got that wrong at the beginning. It was oh, 89. Okay. Yeah. So this was released in 91. Now, the reason we bundled these together is because by themselves, it's probably, there's not really a whole lot to them. I and mean, theoretically, these they're sort of, well, I'll get into it, but they're kind of, Swift is sort of a sequel to Silkworm. So, uh, again, 1991. Uh, the, again, this is the same kind of crew, the sales curve, and random access. Uh, the designer of this was Dan Merchant. I heard him and, and, the, and the graphics guy, Ned Langman, were the guys that really were the driving forces behind this game. Looking over what they've done, like Dave Merchant only did KGB and Swift, that's it. And Ned, he did a couple, he did Double Dragon 3, which is actually a pretty good version on the, on the uh, media. It's a terrible game, though, Double Dragon 3. Well, it's, you know, it depends on what you like. Uh, he was on any Rodland, another guy, Judge Dredd, the same <laughs> stuff. Again, this was for the original one disc. <coughs> this had now, this took the uh, concept of Silkworm and literally turned it, you know, how would that be? 90, so 45 degrees, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, you're it's right. A, it's 45 a, it's degrees. A, a, this is a vertical shooter. Mm -hmm. Now, I read some interviews about this, and, and the way this went down is these guys had just done these arcade conversions. And they decided they wanted to do something on their own, mm -hmm. right? 
So this was not an official sequel. This was not licensed from Tecmo. Okay. Uh, they, and the reason it's called uh, SWIV as opposed to Silkworm 4 or whatever, they were, I guess it was basically so they would have to pay Tecmo any money. Mm. So, uh, uh, and they said, well, we could have named, why wasn't it named SW2? Well, that sounded lame. Right. It basically sounds like, they, they, the reasoning I read was to make it sort of like Star Wars film. Well, you know, it's funny because whenever I see that, I just think Star Wars Episode 4. Right, right. And, so. and that's what they did. It's good um, marketing. Clever. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a vertical version of the, of the game, but really, this is sort of a whole its own game. Mm-hmm. It, there's no, there are comparisons. Obviously, you play a helicopter or a jeep. One of the reasons they turned it vertically is to give the jeep a better chance. Mm. Uh, one of the things in the in the horizontal game is that jeep, like I said, was really tough. You're jumping over stuff, you're dodging stuff, and you can't fly. You're really in in this game. You're at the same advantage or disadvantage as the chopper. For yeah, because I mean, you're yeah. Um, this this game uh, came out on the Amiga, the ST, the C sixty fours, the X Spectrum, Amstrad CPC. But here's the wacky one: uh, it was converted to the Game Boy Color in two thousand. Holy cow! Wow. Which I thought that was kind of that was kind of a neat thing. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of different uh, uh, people that uh, explanations as to what Civ means. Uh, uh, sw- a lot of people think it means silkworm in vertical. I oh, read that one a lot, uh, but uh, it, uh, from what I've been able to read, it means they, it doesn't have a meaning. <laughs> Effectively, they just sort of named it that, and uh, and and there's no meaning to it to it at all. You know what they? You know what uh, they used to ask Don McLean what American Pie meant? You know what he said? Uh uh-uh. uh Means I never have to work again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's had uh, some difficulty here recently. Mm. Um, this this sort of got. I'm not gonna say it ported, but it also appeared on the Super Nintendo as Super Swi- Swiv. If you, I don't know if you. I think of that. I've heard of that too. And it also there was a re a remix version on the Super Nintendo called Firepower 2000. Really? Yeah. Uh, apparently they ported Super Swiv. They also have a, a, a Mega Drive release called Mega Swiv. <laughs> these guys are very clever, right? Yeah. Um, and apparently these were pretty. I think they did these in like six months. These mm-hmm. conversions. They're apparently quick and dirty. And I guess they went back and cleaned it up, cleaned up uh, Swift to release on the Super Nintendo as Firepower 2000. Mm. So let's talk about this one for a minute. And this one, like you said, we're flying, we're now flying vertically. Mm-hmm. Now, I, ha- I have to say, I had not played this game. I'd heard about it, but I never played it or even seen it. This surprised me. This is a hell of a game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. This. As much as I like Silkworm, and you know I'm a big fan of Silkworm, mm-hmm. holy cow, where's this thing been my whole life? Mm-hmm. Uh, the only, the nearest comparison that I can draw to it is Banshee. Banshee, that's what I was thinking. I like this more than Banshee mm-hmm. uh, at, because it's got the element of the Jeep, mm-hmm. the two players simultaneous, the uh, the fact that it's uh, they they put a special system in here where there's no loading, so it's one long. I think I think it timed out to forty six minutes, you know, with you know with the added gameplay and battling in uh, on the long play I, I, that I saw of it. Uh, the the various lands you go through are awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did yeah, a real the good job. Are great. There are homages to other games in it. I don't know how far you got into it. I got to I could actually get to the homage. Well, of course, I was cheating, but uh, I got through a good chunk of the game before I was just getting killed left and right, and I felt really bad for cheating this badly. <laughs> But there's a you get to a certain point where there's a almost a direct homage, if you will, to Zevius. Did you see that part? No. Have you ever played Zevius? Oh, yeah. You remember the bit where the mirrors are flipping? <laughs> yep. At mm-hmm. the beginning, and there's little yep. the little uh, round things coming ching and mm-hmm. the, it's exactly that. Oh. The things on the ground, and something they added to that level, which I thought was just awesome. You remember in um, Zevius where there's like almost like it looks like Indian imprintations on the land, like there'll be like a firebird. In the, in, it's in, oh, in, you know, the, in like the grass or right, something? Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. In this game, you come upon this ship that's parked mm-hmm. on the ground, and you start firing at it, and eventually it'll give a drive off. And when it gets up and drives off, the imprint that it's left looks like one of those crazy designs oh, from wow. Zevius. But the, the, the little, the little uh, shooting guns that go in the road is there. I mean, there's no doubt. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, oh, it's sort of like it. It is Zevius. <laughs> so it's sort of like the game in the game. Yeah. There are many parts of this that remind me of Alcon, mm-hmm. if you've heard, or Slap Fight. Uh, it's also called Stupidly. Uh, where it's very similar to that in some in some areas. 
uh, this game, I was really I couldn't believe how good it was. Uh, the the goose ship makes an appearance again, which really it's one of the only things that would you know bear any resemblance to the to the side scrolling game mm-hmm. is the is that goose ship that comes into being. You blow it up, and that's how you get your power ups in this. Uh, I believe there are four power ups. It's like a wide shot, a close up shot, and then there's uh, points in the form of money, and, and you get a little bit of uh, invincibility. Mm-hmm. And then there are those bubbles that will make you indestructible for a short amount of time. And you can also shoot them and blow and make a smart bomb. I don't know, it blows up everything on the screen. Um, I, I, I really dug this one. Uh, the uh, the music that boots up is good. Again, the sound effects are great. There's a nice rumble. Uh, you have tanks. Uh, driving on on the ground that leave tracks. Uh, I like when you go. There's one area where you go into the grass and it, and you and it leaves tracks in the in the grass. You know the high grass. There are points over water, and if you're playing the jeep, your jeep parks and you get in a boat. Wow! And you do you ever That's see awesome. that? And you no. and you drive the boat to the so it's those water portions where you're on the boat. There's portions where you're in the uh, there are pyramids and the tops will come off and guns will come mm-hmm. out. It's just awesome. There are things you can fly. The jeep can drop under that. You know that's that. You know so it, the, there's uh, several layers of playability with it, uh, which is neat. Uh, it's just uh, the jeep still has its sort of mobile gun. Uh, it's I was blown away. I really I couldn't. I mean, of all the games we played, this was right up in the up in the top echelon of ones that just uh, took me completely by surprise. Uh, uh, I really I really loved it. What did you, What did you think? I agree. I agree with everything you said. This game is maybe no, not maybe. This game is my fir- my favorite vertical shooter on the uh, the Amiga. Did this it's eclipse Banshee for you? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and I Ban- like and Banshee, we like Banshee. Banshee. And there are some things in Banshee that aren't in this. Mm-hmm. To be fair, like the little guys running around. Yeah, and, uh, I like that stuff. But the the setting, the way that the environments change, the the whole jeep and plane or helicopter aspect. Um, it's great. I love it. That, that really le- adds a, a different level of... And think of the design mm-hmm. that would go into something like yeah. that. It would be... <laughs> you really have to plan it out. Otherwise, you'll end up with two vehicles that are identical. They just look different. Yeah, and I was watching a, a, a playthrough before I actually got to play it. And I was watching the helicopter go through across this water. So, like, what is, what is going to happen to the poor Jeep here? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> like, so I said, the boat. The boat's great. It very, uh, you ever played... Spy Hunter. That's what it reminds me of. There's a point where you're in the boat. You're in the car, mm-hmm. then you're in the boat. It's a, sort of the same thing. You're in the you're in the armored boat. I like the uh, track screens where it shows like this sort of a blueprint of the vehicles, mm-hmm. you know, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, the credit screens real funny where they show the little the actual faces of the people that made the game. Oh, I didn't see that. And it's that's real clever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of little flourishes that I, I really like. Uh, this game also has an ending. It's as wacky, uh, well, almost as wacky as the other one. Let me dig it up here. The uh, uh, these guys obviously had a sense of humor uh, when it comes to this stuff. The uh, there's this one also has a cheat mode. Uh, I should mention this in case anybody wants to cheat. Uh, if you uh, if you pause the gameplay and type NCC dash seventeen oh one. <laughs> and hit enter. It'll enable the cheat mode with, uh, with, uh, with unlimited lives. So that's that's something to know about. Uh, let me find this here. While you're looking that up, yeah. have you ever looked at the Starship, uh, the model Starship lighting group on Facebook? No, I've not. This not. is my new favorite group on Facebook. These guys build models. Yeah. And the lighting, the way that they use those little fiber optic lights to light them up. Oh, man, it looks great. When you were talking about that code, it just made me think about seeing this Enterprise all lit up and awesome. You need to check out that. that I movie. will. You know, guess what? I don't think I have this written down. It's something to the effect of once you've won the game, it's like, well, congratulations, you ended the war, and your unit's been disbanded, and now you're unemployed. <laughs> like, well, you'll, be get, you'll be getting a check in the mail from the government. That's basically, that's the end of the game, wow. which I thought that was kind of funny. Um, this game has what's called the DLS, Dynamic Loading System, which apparently at this point was becoming pretty complex, but I don't remember a lot, I mean... A game that long that loads its stuff out itself as it goes. It's amazing it was getting that done on that. That's Amiga, awesome. You know? That's so cool. Um, the four weapons you can get with spread shot, precision cannon, the shot enhancer, and then the bonus money. And yeah, I said that would give you invincibility. The bonus money thing was a little dollar sign to give you points. Um, this game reviewed remarkably well. Look at the scores. Almost all in the 90s. A uh, couple in the 80s. But for the most part, this reviewed even better than the old one. Hmm. Uh, well, I can believe it. Yeah. 
again, I don't. I'm not sure this one had a release in a, in the states. The all the versions of it I have are um, in PAL, mm. which sucks because I lose part of the screen. Yeah, which I need that part because I'm not that good. Uh, there are big bosses in this that you fight. Did you ever get any of the, any the bosses? No. There's a there's a there's a giant laser you've got to fight. There, then there's this kind of a, uh, a lot of this game takes place with these with these weapons that are sort of on rails, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. And you might follow up like there's one bit where you follow this chunk of uh, construction as it slides up the rails. Then all of a sudden you see it a big thing it's sliding into, and you're like, oh crap! <laughs> and once it slides in there, the whole the whole damn thing fires up wow. and it goes after you, which is always that thing's kind of neat. Uh, there's, there's all. They're basically, you're fighting these big lasers. That's basically effectively what you're fighting. Uh, the end. I watched the end of this game where it's, you sort of fight this sort of. It's almost like a reactor looking thing. It's real interesting. I let the colors in this remind me. I will say that maybe it's a limitation of the of the, uh, of the Amiga, but the color palette was very Banshee esque. Mm -hmm. That kind of brown. Yeah. And, but it changed a lot. Uh, they they got a lot of mileage. I mean, they went and did every sort of background they could think of. I mean, mm -hmm. there's everything in this game. There's fields. There's Oceans, there's mountains, there's volcanoes, there's you know Arctic, there's everything. They mm -hmm. they pretty much ran the gambit on it. All in all, I mean, like I said, it's amongst the, I, I, it's one of my favorite games now. Yeah, I played it quite a bit this week. Yeah, um, I'm stunned. It's a it's a good day to be a host of this show and play stuff like that uh, when you have not seen it before. Um, this game ended up getting another sequel. Which was called, I believe it was called Sviv 3D. I had a look at it and I did not like it. <laughs> um, I can't believe that a game with a uh, 3D tag would not be any good. Well, it was <laughs> I th it was released on the PC and it had it wasn't the shooter in the conventional sense. This is one that uh, remember that era in the PC where they had went to that kind of rendered landscaping thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a helicopter game that used this, and I'm trying to think of the name of it, it's, it's on the tip of my brain, I can't think of it, but um, this is, does that sort of rendered land yeah, thing. Yeah, 3D. And, it's, and your ship is there, and there's a crosshair, and you're sort of just flying. And you, you just got, and it's funny that you get all this extra movement, you get all this extra freedom, and the game stinks. It's funny how that works, where sometimes being in a 2D or world, it's just better. Mm -hmm. And this was a game where it was better. Mm -hmm. uh, this should never ever have went to a 3D world. So yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look for it. Stay with, me. stay with Swiv. Yeah, yeah, move yeah. On. Oh, I, I looked this one up on eBay as well. Of course. Uh, again, no American releases uh, on here. Uh, everything in Europe. Box version of this is going to run you between thirty and eighty-five bucks. Pretty wide uh, yeah. range. Uh, disc only, you're still looking between, say, 15 to 40 bucks uh, U.S. Uh, again, I have a feeling this didn't get a U.S. release since I couldn't find anything in the States. That's mm -hmm. usually what that means. And that's another thing. It's hard to find where things got released. I've had so much trouble trying to find where things It's were weird. Like. You'd think that that information... Yeah, I can understand not being able to dig up sales figures, but it's funny. Well, so many of these companies don't exist anymore or yeah, whatever. Yeah, they were just kind of fly-by-night operations yeah, to begin and, with. And, and, and again, this is a lot like Three Stooges in that uh, um, these guys didn't do that much on the, this particular outfit. Didn't do a whole lot on the mm -hmm. Amiga, these two guys, these two outfits. And so there's just not a lot of you know stuff rolling around about it. But much like Silkworm, Swiv used a lot of programming tricks to squeeze every little morsel of power out of the thing. And it, and it amazes me that all that fit on the disc. Yeah, that's it. That know, is amazing. Uh, the... Uh, uh, I was reading the story from the guy, and he said uh, that they had used a super encryption this guy had worked on, where the disc would not read on any Amiga, uh, would, you know, unless you. It seems like it would be a detriment well, to the game. It wouldn't. When I, it's a format that was foreign to the Amiga, and only, it basically you could only use it to load up the game. Was to, oh, okay. To not copy, I think he said the pirates had it copied in thirty hours. <laughs> and another guy talked about a game where they it was so big they had to release it on two discs, mm -hmm. and they said within like a week the pirates had gotten the discs. Stripped out the copy protection, inserted some compressions, and managed to put it all in one disc. And they had no idea how they'd done it. These guys were very impressed with the pirates back That's, in the yeah. day. But he said both games sold great. So there you go. That's good. That's good. Um, well, let's go ahead and wind this show up by thanking our supporters. I'm going to do it in the style of Elton John singing Honky Cat. Paul Harrington. Wait a minute. That's not Honky Cat. How does Honky Cat go? What's new? Honky Cat. 
Yeah, I'm getting back from the woods. Maybe I don't want to do it in the style of honky cat. That would be bad. Trust I'll me, just... you're, you're going in the style of honky. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Harrington, Lauren Giroux, Loggins, Jonas Rullo, Cole Bjorn Barman. Tapes from the Crypt, Adam Bradley, Chris Folds, Will Williams, Daniel Bingston, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Chad Halstead, and Brent Dowdy. Thank you very much for your support. Hold on a second. You didn't sing the new guy's name. Yeah, d- Paul. Oh. He wanted to hear you sing his name. Well... I was going to do Honky Cat, but Can't I... you sing his name in Honky Cat? Well, in my mind, it was coming out different. Get back. Paul Harrington. That doesn't work. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I did He's that. probably going to withdraw his funds. I, would, I, don't I don't blame, blame you, Paul. I don't blame you. Next week, I'll do better. I promise. He won't. Uh, speaking of next week, I figured we'd try uh, that old Peter Molyneux classic, Populous. Okay, we'll give it a shot. I, I, have, I own that. Which you would think that would mean I was good at it. Nope. <laughs> it's a different title for sure. I'm looking yes. forward to playing it. So. I will try to learn it. <laughs> All right. Until then. Adios. Adios.